Okay, uh, joining us for the first managerial interview after a hectic summer for the two of you is uh, John Underwood and Neil Baker. Good summer? Yep, really good, thanks. Um, we've just got us after our, our annual trip to Portugal that we go on, so that's why we've waited till Thursday to get our voices back. Mine in or particular. Bakes in, in particular. But no, it's been... It's been good. It's been it's been busy. All managers at this level say that. Um, you spend a lot of time talking to players, obviously trying to keep what you want to keep from the squad, and and then add to it where you can. And we probably kept quiet for a little bit, didn't we? We were, we were working hard, and uh, and then obviously we had some big announcements a week or so ago, which yeah, we're we're delighted with with what we've done really, and, and where the squad's at at the moment. So um, yeah, it is a really difficult sort of time of the year because the, fan, the fans want to know what's going on immediately and it's trying to manage expectations and you, you don't want to bring out announcements too early because you don't want to alert other clubs that such and such may have not signed and so that, yeah. there's you have to think it's about so against, much yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. obviously we came out with with some some announcements and then obviously sort of went, went a little bit quiet for a few more weeks and yeah, there's a lot going on, but we're really excited, really excited for the season. Can't wait, to be honest. Um, so, before we go on to the new signings, we'll talk about some of the signings that stayed on from last year. Maybe important signings, <coughs> such as people like Eddie, yep. uh, Joe Dandy and Aaron Cool. Yep. Um, young players, good players that could easily have possibly gone somewhere else, but decided to stay with you guys. Yeah, I think I think so. Um, we, we've got... A, we feel, we feel we had a, a good nucleus back end of the season, a mixture of you know youth and experience, and and it was important for us to, to keep the majority of those and, and add to add, and add to it. Um, obviously, Edon had some interest. Yeah. Um, um, at one point, we weren't sure if he if he would be staying. I think he sees the value in in uh, having a season with us or uh, at least half a season you know we'll, we'll see we'll see how well he does you know his uh, his ambition is to to play as high as he can which is which is what you want from a from a young player and you know he's got the tools and I think Joe Dandy had a brilliant end to the season um, really excited about Joe um, you know George as well you know George had a brilliant season for us and I think you know there was interest in him and obviously Aaron Aaron as well you know he's a Top top player, so um, yeah, we're, we're delighted, aren't we, with 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 what we've managed to keep? Yeah, and with some of those, you do have to be a bit patient because we understand that players may get opportunities at a higher level. We never want to stand in players' way if if they get a genuine opportunity at a higher level. So you sometimes have to give them a little bit of space to have some conversations with you know because these these lads had good seasons, particularly someone like Cooley, who, you know, throughout the whole season. Obviously, Edon came part way through. Joe towards the end, but but George Cooley, you know, they had really good seasons throughout. So there's going to be interest, and it, it, it's great that there is. It shows that we've got good players here. Um, but yeah, we're delighted to keep them. It felt probably particularly with, I say, I don't like to pick individuals out, but Caw Cooley was huge for us. And I think again, a bit like Ellen, there were stages where we thought we might lose him. Um, so to have him with us is is brilliant. Is that the hardest part of the summer? Is trying to keep players who, you, who have obviously had good seasons like you, the yeah. players you've mentioned because you know that that's attracting interest of course of yeah absolutely and um, yeah, it, it, it makes the recruitment that much harder if you, if you lose three or four more you know you then got to try and find the right players to replace them if you can keep the majority and you know, we've, we have kept the vast majority then it means you can be a little bit more selective about what you go after and um, there's less kind of panic that yeah. you know you know because there are there are always players available through the summer and there'll be players available over the next month and when you've got the vast majority in place you can actually relax a bit and know that you know maybe there's space still for one or two more to come along um, but if you're looking for six or seven you you start to maybe panic a little bit but we're, we're not in that position for, for me it's, it's so important as well to keep keep the players who, who want to be at this club you know Scott Davis you Matt Lynch Josh Jackmans uh, Norfie you know yeah. I, I'm sure I'm missing people out yeah. here but you know they're so important so important to what we have as a as a club you know Scott in particular you know Scott is you know ever since he's sort of been at the club and especially since he's been back you know he's just such a, a positive character and you know he, he, he he's good with the youngsters he's good with the senior players you know that's why we've made him made him our skipper and and Josh Jackman as well Josh is you know we, we decided to make Josh vice captain Josh has been with us for many years now and you know he improves year on year brilliant attitude and 
you know, they're the types of people you want around the club and, you know, we, we you know, yeah, we Josh had the was, a, was a quiet lad, wasn't he? When yeah, he first he came in, he was a very quiet lad and he's just grown in stature, become more of a leader and he captained us once towards the end of last season, didn't he? And, and yeah, yeah, he's, I think he's got that in his, in his makeup. He's, he's not, not a shouter and a no. baller, but he's an intelligent lad who, who says the right things at the yeah. right time. And obviously Togs, you know, Togs is massively important with, within the, the, you know, the management team, the coaching side as well. And, Obviously, a top player as well. So, you know, but but all round, you know, we were really pleased to keep keep everyone. You know, you, you got, look at a, a Gabe. You know, who, Gabe's contract was up at the end of the season, and and I think, you know, he will push on for the year that he's just had. You know, he had a, maybe a little bit of disappointment early on, but ended the season with Binfield had a great end to the season, and and uh, you know stepped in and you know had a great game at Hampton last game of the season so you know and Imran was already signed for the season so um, yeah no we're, we're, we're delighted with how things have gone with, with sort of like the players that we had last season. Does that kind of uh, mentality and ethic and um, we see it a lot because obviously behind the scenes the camaraderie that you've got you've got the players who've come back such as uh, George Wells, Guy Hollis, Dobbo, Yep. Ben, Ben, sort sort of, sort of went, and I mean that's a you know like Ben's a brilliant character. Uh, you know he he we 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 sat there with Ben. We didn't really want to lose Ben. You know obviously his issues have been his fitness, and you know but Ben Ben wants to be here as well. And you know he's worked hard in the summer, and you know we hope that we can get the best out of Ben. But but yeah, like the likes of Dobbo, Wellesley, and um, Guy, they they. W- I guess they they enjoy the environment. They enjoy the fans. They enjoy being at the club, and you know we've had some good times together. So you we know, look at Dobbo and Wellesley. They they both left us to take up opportunities at a high level. So went with our blessing. Went on good terms. They got those moves because of how well they'd done here. They were huge huge part of a real good period we had with the cup runs and the the promotion to the National League South, and so. You don't fall out with those players when they step up a level. You know they're left on good terms. We stay in contact with them. We wish them the best. And just for both of them, the time was right this summer that you know to come back. And we stayed in touch. And yeah, they're they're two. You know, obviously, Guy had left. You know, um, not so long ago. A bit. You know, not. A bit. I think Guy must be spent more time here. Yeah. <laughs> I think Guy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, he players, sometimes players leave for for different reasons and. Um, as long as they leave for the right reasons and we understand the reasons yeah. and it's all very uh, open and amicable, we don't shut the door on people coming yeah. back, you know, especially when they're players that we know and we trust. And, and these are good players we're talking yeah. about. So, yeah, we, you know, it, but it feels familiar for them coming back in. And, you know, it was great on Tuesday seeing those boys see each other for, for the first time in a little while. And, and they're not like new signings they just they just slot straight back in but there's that so. excitement i think from from them as well because they also know that that we've got some good players within and i think what we've what we've added should hope that, well we'll be competitive that's that's the only thing that we can ever really say you know we always want to be competitive as a as a club and and i hope that that's you know with what we've got we, yeah. we should be we should be that this season did it help them with the fact that you've got this you know you've got players like Dobbo and Wellesley, who have played higher guys, obviously gone full time, have come back. And then you've got the signings of Johnny Goddard and Elliot Bennion, who, again, very experienced, very good players at this level. Um, is it easy to attract them when they can see what's going on? Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think players like to know what you're doing and who you're signing. So, although we hadn't announced those players, you know, if you're talking to a Johnny or a, a Elliot, you're talking about the sorts of players that you're bringing in who had, you know, maybe a few of those had just committed. I think Cooley had just committed and George. And and so although we hadn't announced it, you know, we were able to tell them and they realised that you're serious. You're serious about having a good season. So that definitely helped. And that's sometimes why you kind of announce them in a group because sometimes you just pull it all together yeah. at the same time. And, and uh, it certainly helps us to get those lads. I mean, we've got We've had a decent relationship with, with Elliot Benyon over, over the years. We've spoken to him previously about coming. He's had a really good three years at Oxford City. Um, and yeah, I think he was, he was ready for a new challenge. He was someone that always seemed to do well. I think he scored against us in both games last year. Um, but he fits the sort of player we like. He works hard. He's got a great attitude. Uh, fits instantly well in, into the changing room. Um, and we were clearly a little bit short up top, obviously with Alfonso uh, moving on. Um, you know, we don't have lot. We didn't have lots of forward options, so that was something we were looking to add. So, yeah, I think I think he'll be a great signing for us, and maybe Johnny, you'll 
touch on Johnny. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've known Johnny for a, quite a long time as well. Um, there was there was a possibility of us trying, you know, possibly getting him last year. Yeah. Um, didn't it didn't happen? Um, but we're, we're delighted. I mean, he's technically a very very good player, can play in a number of positions. And uh, again, you know, we, we we met up with him and just a real really good lad, you know. And we knew immediately that he'll fit into what we like in a changing room, and and that's key for us. It's so important and. Um, Obviously, it helps that he's a, a very good footballer as well. Yeah. So, um, but you know, he'll he'll bring creativity. Um, what what it does, you know, the squad that what we've got, it it, it gives us um, real competition for places, um, and 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 the players can see that as well, which which gives them that little bit extra. So, hopefully, that will only bode well, really. Yeah, and um, I guess the one missing is Sean. Is uh, we're talking about Sean's testimonial, isn't it? But. Um, it does feel strange, doesn't it? <laughs> not having when it comes to first pre-season and Sean's not here because he's been here so long. It does. Mind, hey. mind you, the one thing is, we we actually started our training session ten minutes early yeah. on t- Tuesday night. Sean would get there one minute to yeah. seven. Every yeah, he, he was never late. Yeah. Never late. He would get there because he was so, lived so close. He was one minute to seven every single training yeah. session. Yeah. So we'd always have to wait for for Sean and. Uh, so we, we did manage that. So that's one, one yeah, positive. One but positive. yeah, you know, lo- losing Sean, you know, he's been such a major part of the club um, for 10 years and, you know, obviously with us for nine years and he's just a, a, a good all-round person, excellent footballer. Um, he's been a pleasure as need to manage. And mm. obviously the, the uh, testimonial on Sunday, um, we just... <sighs> It's so difficult week because... Week on Sunday. Yeah, sorry, week on Sunday. Did I, what did I say? You said Sunday. Oh, did I? Week on Sunday, <laughs> 10th of July. Um, we just want the fans to come out. And I'm not just talking, you know, the the people that come week in, the hardcore that come week in, week out, want the others to come. People yeah. who, who don't necessarily come week in, week out. It's not, it's not a glamour game. It's not, you know, we haven't got a Man United or, you know, we've got players who've who've given a lot to Slough um, uh, over the years and, you know, have played for Slough and they're all coming together for Sean and uh, we would just love people to turn up on week Sunday. Um, and even if you don't want to turn up, you know, buy a virtual ticket, um, yeah. get online, you know, just support the fact that he, he has been brilliant for the club and uh, I would love, love to see it really busy on week Sunday. Yeah, Absolutely. and we've got some extra things going on. We've got raffles and stuff, some kind of season ticket, got golf days, yep. got Tom Bowlers and stuff. Yep. So there's everything for everyone. Correct. Uh, one o'clock kickoff. One o'clock kickoff, yeah. Yep. So, Absolutely. Uh, people got time to get over the hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, two things though. First of all, got any new other signings lined up? Are you still a little bit short, maybe up front? Or yeah, I mean, there's probably space. There's yeah. probably space um, up top, as you've said. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're looking. We've got a couple of other players in with us at the moment yeah. that uh, I guess a bit like George Hunt last year. So George wasn't uh, a player that was on our radar. He kind of came to us, to be honest, um, and we thought. You know, we're probably well covered in that position we when were, he came we in, were. and we saw him in our first game yeah, and changed like, our minds we immediately. We need to sign him, um, <laughs> and and you make space for players. You know, you find a way, and there's yeah, there's a couple that we're looking at at the moment, um, and we'll we'll see if they do really well, then we'll we'll find a place for them. But yeah, I think up front is probably um, certainly where we we don't have an abundance of players. We're we're okay, but you know that is something we're we're looking at. So. Yeah, there might be a couple of trialists in the game Saturday. Yeah. There might be one or two that come in over over the course of the next month. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, players are becoming available all the time. So we're, we're certainly not panicking on that. We think there's also the options of, of loans. So we've got some good relationships with, with some clubs and we're talking to them about maybe players that might be available. So there's different things we're looking at and um, things can evolve. Um, but nothing imminent, you know, I don't think we'll be making any announcements in the next couple of weeks. Um, last question, because I know the two of you are very ambitious. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your goals <laughs> this season? <laughs> I know you said you want to be competitive and that's the main thing, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we always want to be competitive. Um, I think that's all we ever said, you know, we, when we got ourselves into the playoffs a few years ago, that was all we ever said, you know, yeah. let's be competitive, let's be competitive. And I think if you're competitive, it gives yourself a chance. And let's be honest, everyone aspires for promotion. Everyone aspires, you know, as, as managers, as players, you don't go into any season 
not wanting to try and get promoted. You know, so the only way of doing that is by winning the league or getting yourself in the top seven. Well, that's obviously our that's our aim. That's our aim. That's what we would love to do. I don't think there's any managers in the league who sit here now and 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 say I just want to stay up. Yeah. You know, if you take maybe Welling who finished second bottom, they're full time this year. You know, they've made some big signings, signed some players from Dartford, and they'll be looking at playoffs. And they finished second bottom, so it doesn't matter if you if you're Tombridge with a new manager. They're you know they're making signings and they're gonna everyone's gonna look at it and say why why can't we do it? So. Um, and it will be a competitive league. Oh, it's you been know, really like, tough league. We talked about it. Yeah. You know, full-time teams. You know, you've got the likes of Weymouth and Dover coming in. Your Farnborough. Um, you know, Taunton coming into Worthing. Worthing were, you know, they were two years. They, they, they would have won it the two previous years, I think, as well. You know, um, so there's there's going to be some really good sides. And the fact you've got 24 teams in it, so um, it's going to be a hell of a lot tougher. Um, more interesting for me, you know, we've we've had the same teams in the league for for the last few years. So so to have some new teams yep. is, is great. Um, a few seaside towns to visit, yeah, which few, the fans like, few, don't they? Love few, going down to Eastbourne. Few so weekends got, away, isn't it? Worthing, yeah. Weymouth, Dover, yeah. yeah. They're all going to be in the no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, so um, we know it's going to be tough, but our ambitions, as always, are as high as we can, and and ideally that would be in the playoffs or even win the league. You never know, but no. It's, uh, <laughs> that would be our that would be our ultimate aim. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for joining us, guys, and a uh, very very good season. Thanks, cheers, cheers Aid. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Aid.